Hey guys, welcome back to the BMW Blog YouTube channel and welcome to Orlando. I have to drive from Orlando to Daytona and I think I won the lottery today because I'm driving this car. So every time I come to Daytona, BMW gives me the choice to get a BMW to drive myself from Orlando to Daytona. And today, the lottery gave me the BMW M3 CS in frozen white. I've driven a car before, but of course now I'm excited once again to get behind the wheel because it's one of my favorite BMW M cars today. So before I get going and show a little bit of the driving experience, let's take a quick look around the car and talk about the M3 CS. Of course, it's based on the BMW M3 competition, but it comes with a bunch of carbon fiber parts. As you can see in the back, you have this beautiful trunk spoiler. Of course, you have this carbon fiber diffuser with massive quad pipes in the back. Of course, you can see all these extra aero parts on the car. And if you go to the side, you can see the piano black rocker panel. And of course, the M3CS badge in red. Gold wheels, a staple on BMW CS cars. Of course, carbon ceramic brakes, because you need that. And if you look at the front, you might have noticed already the carbon fiber spoiler, such a beautiful one, nicely done by BMW. It's not an overkill at the front end and it just flows nicely with the design of the car. Of course, you have the massive Kine grille still there, but it's got this motorsport inspired look similar to the BMW M4 CSL. So as you can see, you have these red inserts all around the M3 CS badge in black and red. You can see it's a little bit different than what you get on the BMW M3 competition. More carbon fiber. You can see the air curtains right there. Then, of course, once again, the side view of the front spoiler. And now let's open the door because, of course, we have carbon bucket seats. As you can see, Alcantara wrapped steering wheel with the M1 and M2 red buttons. Of course, you have this 12 o'clock marker in red as well. And then naturally, the carbon bucket seats. You can see it has this dual tone combination, black and red. Of course, you have the red inserts right there. And then you have this nice perforated leather with red dots behind it. Very, very cool looking. And of course, plenty of carbon fiber. It's a CS car, so naturally you got to have that. Center console, similar to the BMW M4 CSL, no change there. Of course, there are no cup holders, so we'll see how that goes over the next few days. And then, of course, practicality. It's an M3 CS. We will see the M4 CS very, very soon. But this is why the M3 CS might be my favorite because you can actually use it as a daily driver with people in the car. Once again, you have the same dual tone combination of leather in the back. And then you can see the carbon bucket seats from behind. Absolutely beautiful seats. Oh my God. Takes off. I mean, that's the beauty of the M3 CS, right? So you have the M4 CSL, absolutely fantastic car, but it just tries to kill you a little bit too fast. This one, thanks to the BMW MX Drive, it's got that all-wheel drive, additional traction. Here we go. I'm driving from Orlando to Daytona. At some point, I'm gonna put a POV GoPro on my head. I'm gonna show a little bit of the driving experience, maybe talk a little bit more about what it feels like, what the car can do, and all of that. But let's recap the BMW M3 CS quickly. So. It's based on the M3 competition, 543 horsepower, 479 pounds feet of torque. I believe it goes from zero to 60 in 3.4, 3.5 seconds. So yes, this is a little rocket. Despite being quite heavy, the car does weigh about 75 pounds lighter than the M3 competition. So that makes it a little bit more fun, I guess, even though it's still a very heavy car. So you're probably not gonna feel that, you know, weight loss immediately. If you go on the track, it's probably a little bit more noticeable, but you know, driving on a flat road and straight, I highly doubt it. Anyone would actually notice the lower weight. All right, so let's talk about what makes the M3 CS a little bit more special than the M3 competition. Of course, just like with all the CS models, BMW starts with a competition. So in this case, the G80 M3 competition. Of course, the goal with the M3 CS was to make the car a little bit stiffer than the base competition model. And that means adding some additional structural bracing. Of course, there is a unique suspension and chassis tuning, which is always part of the CS recipe. Additionally, its suspension kinematics, bushings, 
camber settings, anti-roll bars and electronically controlled dampers are all tuned specifically for the M3 CS. And it's more than just the badges also because BMW said that even the traction control in the M3 CS was specifically tuned for the car and it's not a carryover from the M3 competition. You have the option to get the Michelin Cup 2R tires. If you're looking to make the M3 CS more of a daily driver, then BMW also offers at no cost the Michelin PS4S. I always tell people, if you're going to track the car, absolutely go for the Michelin Cup 2R tires because they're absolutely phenomenal on the track. But if this is your daily driver, then you should go for the PS4S. Of course, you can hear the sound of that S58 engine. Naturally, there is a bit of a fake sound inside the car, but in the opening clip, you had a chance to hear the cold start and it sounds really, really nice. Inside, of course, you're getting only one choice, this combination of black and Mugello red. I believe that's the name of the leather combination. And you only have one choice of seats, and that's the carbon bucket seats. Once I'm settled into the seats, they feel great. There is amazing side bolster support. They feel great on my back as well. So I really don't have a complaint when it comes to maybe daily driving. I haven't really had a chance to drive the M3CS over very, very long distances. I think the most that I've done was maybe two or three hours and the seats were okay. That's probably my threshold. Now, if you're looking to do a cross country road trip or even a multi hours, you know, road trip with the M3CS or the upcoming M4CS, then maybe the carbon bike seats will bother you a little bit. But you're not buying this car for the road trip. You're really buying this car to be a weekend track weapon because once you take it on the track, this car really comes to life. I had a chance to go with Nate to the M Performance School in South Carolina and we pushed the car quite a bit. It was absolutely fantastic on the track, very sharp, razor sharp I would say, very composed and a lot of fun. Then we wanted to see what the car can really do and we asked one of the pro drivers there to push the car to its maybe not full limit but close to the upper limit and honestly it was so much fun that after a couple of laps I had to get out of the car because I was getting car sick. It's a very very limited car I believe only a few hundred of them came to the US somewhere between three and four hundred units I believe the global number is below 2000 so this will be a very very exclusive car in the future as well naturally with all this move towards electrification any of the CS models will definitely, will definitely become classic BMW cars and they will become collector items. Now, let me put my GoPro on my head. Let me show you the cabin from this vantage point. All right, so let's try the MDM mode. This is the most aggressive mode without disabling the DSC. The entire car becomes stiffer. The suspension stiffens up quite a bit. The steering wheel, it's a lot heavier than before, even though it wasn't lacking that. It's still sharper and with a lot more feedback than on the M3 competition, which is something that I absolutely love. And you can see small adjustments and the car just moves on the road quite, quite nicely. And this is why I loved it on the track as well. Shifting, it's really, really good. I mean, this ZF transmission matches perfectly the S58. We've talked about this in the M2 as well. As much as I love to roll my own gears, the ZF A-Speed is just really, really, really good. There are very, very few times when I do miss the DCT maybe, but I would say overall, the character of the S58 just goes nicely, nicely with this ZF A-Speed. You can hear the blurbs in the back. There are people that don't really like them, but I absolutely do because I feel like it's the character of that six cylinder that's what makes it special uh, of course the V8 arguably sounds better or maybe some would say different but this S58 and the B58 they're just some marvelous pieces of engineering that it's really really hard to match I would say they're some of the best engines on the market today not just BMW engines but overall So that's the nice part about the MX Drive. So right there, as I push the car, 
the power shifted towards the rear wheels because it's got a rear bias. So essentially, whenever you need more power to the rear wheels, the car will automatically give you that. Of course, it senses that you're losing traction maybe, so then it will try to shift more power to rear wheels, and of course, that's gonna keep the car on the road a lot better than before. A lot of people complain about the cars getting heavier and of course having this MX drive, the all-wheel drive, but I believe a lot of customers were looking for a year-round car. You don't just want to have a car like in Chicago that you can drive maybe three, four, five months of the year. So people wanted that X-Drive system and BMW gave them that. Luckily, you can still buy a six-speed manual non-competition model with a rear wheel drive. So if your goal is to lose some weight, two, three hundred pounds, maybe a little bit more maybe than that, then absolutely you can do that because BMW offers that option. So there is maybe half a second of a turbo lag, of course, something that you can really avoid. I mean, it's still a, a turbocharged engine. So despite all these tricks and all the boosted PSI and the turbos and all of that, you're just not going to be able to eliminate complete the turbo lag. But once it kicks in that torque, the car just takes off, completely takes off. I mean, look, we're in the fifth gear right now. Here we go. Half a second. And now it just takes off. Of course, a smart driver would downshift, we'll keep it in fourth, and let me show you from the fourth, here we go, I mean, it just literally takes off. Of course, if I were to compare the power delivery in the M3 CS compared to the M3 competition, I would say it's a lot more aggressive. I feel like in the M3 and M3 competition, the, you know, the power delivery is a bit more linear. In this one, it definitely puts you back in the seat. So I can tell that the mapping, it's a lot more aggressive. Of course, it's the nature of the M3 CS. You want to have a different car. So blah, blah, blah. Of course, I'm not telling you anything new there. The suspension, I mean, as a daily driver, of course, it's a little harsh. Um, Granted, the roads are great in Florida compared to where I'm coming from, Chicago, which they're absolutely horrible. So I feel like if I were to live in Chicago with this car, maybe I wouldn't enjoy it as much. Let's talk about the steering. As I said, a little bit more feedback than in the M3 competition. I do like this beefy steering. I know a lot of people complain about this, but it's actually one of my favorite things in the M cars. I, for some reason, for some reason, I also love the Alcantara. I have it in my 1M and I feel like it doesn't wear too well, even though I've just read recently that you can wipe it down with a wet cloth and it will restore it quite nicely. And I would say because the car is you know, nearly brand new, only about, I don't know, less than 3,000 miles, I guess, on this one. Um, it just looks brand new, feels great. I love the 12 o'clock marker. It's once again painted in red, Alcantara, just nicely done goes really well with the carbon fiber as well the m1 and m2 buttons all in red and uh, maybe i would prefer the iDrive 7 with a smaller curve display or smaller display but i guess that's where we're getting today so i'm not going to complain too much about this if you live in the u.s and you love your uh, coffee in the morning and the large coffee mugs then you're out of luck because just like the m4 csl you're not getting a cup holder so you might have to figure that one out. Some of you might be wondering about the brakes. Of course, ceramic brakes can say they're needed for street driving, but of course, if you go on the track, they're absolutely worth it. So it just comes down to that, really. Uh, the M Sport brakes, the base ones are very, very good. I mean, we've tested that quite a bit. So now I'm in the M1 mode, as you see right there. Everything is inefficient and comfort. So this is probably my preferred setting for the daily driving this is the beauty of m1 and m2 buttons because you can set this up for the track and you can use that for your daily driving as i said if i were in chicago this would be probably my choice comfort 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 because um I have too many potholes and i don't want a very very harsh daily driving situation so here I am a few days later after spending some time with the BMW M3 CS. In the first part of the video, I covered the ride from Orlando to Daytona. But by now, you know, I have a little bit more experience with the car so I can tell you or maybe I can answer your question. Should I buy this one or the BMW M3 competition? This car costs about $120,000. So that is not cheap. It's 
a lot of money for the car. Of course, all the car prices went up, so it doesn't surprise me. But compared to even the previous generation F80 M3 CS, this one is quite expensive. So of course, if money no issue, I absolutely would say yes, buy this car because it's fantastic. If money is an issue, then is this car worth the premium over the M3 competition? And of course, this comes down to a couple of things. First of all, do you want to own an M3 that's very unique, very limited? So if you drive this car, you will get a lot of attention. Even driving around Daytona, even within the infield area where you have so many fantastic cars from so many different brands, there were a lot of people taking photos and videos of this car. They were asking me questions about the car. And as a funny side note, someone said, hey, is that a special edition M3 with a badge? And I said, no, that's just an M3 CS. And he's like, just an M3 CS. So from that perspective, absolutely, it's worth the money. Now let's talk about the second point, which is daily driving. So if you daily drive your M3 quite a bit, then I would say the M3 CS, it's the stiffer car, the sportier car. It will give you a harsher ride quality. So if you're looking for a more year-round daily drive, then I would say the M3 competition is the better choice. Now, if you want a car that you want to take to the track once in a while, then I would say the M3 CS is definitely the better choice. So it sounds a little bit confusing because if you're asking me which car I would buy personally, if money, no issue, I would have a hard time choosing, but I think in the end, I will go with the M3 CS just because it's just so much fun and it's unique. I'll probably get signal green because I like my cars to be quite flashy and that'll be my choice. And speaking of an M3 CS, let's see one more right next to me because it doesn't get better than this. You have a signal green M3 CS and then you have uh, one right there. It's actually Johnny Lieberman and Mike Spinelli. Here they are, look at these two guys. So with that side note, I'm gonna end the video here. If you wanna see our track review, also check out our description below. But also let me know in the comments section if you would prefer the M3 CS or the M3 competition. And I'm gonna throw a curveball. Would you buy the M3 CS or would you go for the two-seater M4 CSL since that one doesn't have a rear bench. So essentially it's only seating two people. So as always, thanks for watching guys and I will see you in the next one.